Hey boys, welcome back to some more NRL Supercoach preseason discussions and we're up to the final position topic. We we covered the center wing in the last video. There was a, there was a lot to discuss. There's there's a lot of a lot of options. Honestly, I I I love the center wing. It's it's always one of the the fun aspects of Supercoach because a lot of the positions they're pretty stock standard. I mean, the second row this year is also very open. Uh, but the center wing is always very, very open. Like you can, I, especially now with the higher upside, you can definitely spend a bit more cash to really try to get off to a to a flyer. Or you know, if if there are a few cheapies, then I mean, center wingers if they score a try or two, you, you're off to the races. So there's there's a few positions this year that are very open. Now we move into the fullbacks, which is probably the most important position now it's i mean the fullbacks and the halfbacks i would say are the most upside positions so to speak i mean a center wing can obviously go massive but for the whole season the fullbacks and the halfbacks are where you make your big points it's where you're going to put 95 percent of the captain or vice captain on so it is a it is a big position and the difference with fullbacks to halfbacks is that halfbacks, really, there's two options unless you're going to fade one of the big boys. But at the end of the day, there's two standouts in the halfback spot. At fullback, though, there are heaps of options. Like it's it's a <laughs> oh, I'm still I'm still very undecided on what I'm going to do in the fullback spot. The one thing I will say straight off the bat here is. I do think, in my opinion, and it's not a it's not a unique opinion. I think it's it's very common, but you definitely need to have two gun fullbacks. I mean, you can go with someone a little bit undervalued, uh, and we'll we'll talk about a guy like that in in the yeah as as time goes on. But you do have to have two genuine guns. Like at the end of the day. I've seen people with teams and they'll have like a, a cheapy or, or a mid-range guy. And if you want to play the if you want to play super coach like that, obviously pick the team you want to pick. But I will say, if there if there is one position that I think you just need to go big, it's the fullbacks. It just it just is. It just is. Uh, so let's go through the options. Um, and it's tricky. Apart from this guy, Kalen Ponga sitting at a tick under 900k. He's owned by 34% of super coaches. I Again, I hate using the term must have, but I just I find it very difficult to not start with Kalen Ponga. I just, Yes, if you fade Ponga, of course, he is susceptible to a head knock or, or an injury. And if that happens, then, yeah, everyone who goes him is going to get stuffed. But he just, like, he found some really good f- confidence at the back end of last year. I mean, we'll go through his scores because it's... He's undervalued for what he did with the goal kicking. I wouldn't I wouldn't expect him to lose the goal kicking either. Um yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't expect him to lose the the goal kicking. The only thing that would if he did is if he had like a niggle or something, right? So he he's a fullback with the upside, with the goal kicking, and I mean we just look at his his scores. So obviously he started at five eight. He played why did he play sixty nine minutes? He obviously <laughs> I asked why he played sixty nine minutes. Obviously he copped a head knock in round one. Um he scored seventy two points, but then round two he I don't know. Oh, yeah, it definitely was another head knock, right? Yeah, because that's when he he missed a bunch of footy just trying to get right uh, after, I guess, a couple of knocks in a row. Scored one point, so that drops his average. Um, Then he came back 58 in 53 minutes, 16. I don't know if he was playing fullback. As you can see, he was 440k at the time. He was 440k. Now, I definitely... I did not jump on him when he was at his lowest. I... I did get on him. Um, it was after he'd, he'd, he'd risen a bit, but I definitely got to see most of his big, big scores. Uh, missed it by there. And then it starts to get pretty nutty. So, 114. 
He, he only played 69 minutes. I don't know what happened here. Did he cop another head knock? I don't, I don't know. Uh, but he got 50 in 69 minutes. 77 uh, by 92 against the Bronx. 95 against the Roosters. 47 against Penrith, which is honestly pretty damn good. 180 against the Doggies. Uh here he gets unreal by 137 96 122 121 77 91 and 128 so yeah he i mean he finished like now that i know the way the pricing works yeah he finished on 973k and he's coming into this season a tick under 900k so that that shows how undervalued he is at the back end of last year I just, I just, it's just hard not to go. I was going to look as well. His draw to start the season is pretty damn good. Um, where is it? Yeah, he's got Canberra, Cowboys, Melbourne, Warriors, Dragons, Roosters, Dogs, Dolphins. His buy, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. His first buy is only in round 12 as well. And it's just, up until that, like Gold Coast, Tigers, Warriors, it's a really good draw. Like, even... I mean, yeah, the Warriors were great last year, but I still think they can leak some points. Melbourne, definitely not the juggernaut defensively they used to be. And I, I just... I, in my opinion, he's, he is 100% locked into my team, barring any issue. And it's... Like, it's funny because the fullbacks, typically... Typically, it's been like... There's, there's fullbacks that come into this year, or at least there's, there's usually at least one, maybe two, that are like 900, like high 900s, even a million. But like Pong is the most expensive, not even at 900K, which is expensive still, but it's not, I mean, it's not Nico Hines. Nico Hines is a million dollars. So Ponga for me, automatically in. Uh, Scotty Drinkwater at 850K. Now, this is where it gets... Um, tricky right because drink water i i also think is a great pickup but going going the most expensive you are sort of trying to get some value in the second fullback spot while still getting a, a premium option right you still want that premium option for me drink water he was again he was fantastic i mean i well look i mean obviously the start of the year is a little bit deceiving because he scored 59 in round one, which is pretty good. You know, round one of the season, the Cowboys weren't good, and he still scored 59. Then he got he got one. He got sent off. Uh, so, you know, that's it's a bit deceiving, the start of the season. He obviously got suspended. And then on the back of that, he was very, very consistent. Like, his lowest scores, I mean, 49 against Warriors, 44. It's probably his lowest score. Uh, you got you got 29 against Penrith in in the final round, but other than that, like he he wasn't going below 40, which is very very solid. He showed that he's got the ceiling 140, 173, 122. Like there was a period where he was just he was in everything. Like every time he touched the footy, it was I mean very similar to Reese Walsh. Um, very quick across the ground, great passing game. Like every bit of like good attacking play was set up by by drink water and I can't I can't really see them shifting away from that if if Townsend is still the halfback he he is not a guy to really create you know he he gives decent enough service and I guess that's good for drink water Dearden obviously runs the footy a bit more um but they still need drink water to do a lot of the playmaking really he's got a I mean He's got a good start to the season as well. Dolphins, Newcastle, Dragons, Broncos, Gold Coast, Para Sharks, Penrith. It's a it's a pretty damn good start as well for Drinkwater. Personally, he was so good. I just, oh, I don't know. He always he just worries me. You know, I like he, We'll talk about Reese Walsh. I do think is similar to Drinkwater in the sense that both those guys. They're not going to carry the ball 20 times a game. They're not going to get that, like, 50 in base. They need to get attack. And I just feel like to start the season, attacks are always a little bit sluggish, which I know you might be like, well, why would you start with any, like, top-line player? But this is different. I mean, Ponga, he's got the goal-kicking as well, and I think he does, like, 
he's he's just a different beast when he's when he's on to to drink water for being honest and um drink water the cowboys it's going to be hot like i just i don't see drink water going massive to start the season i could be wrong i mean taking on the dolphins but again the dolphins <laughs> coached by wayne bennett they pulled off like fucking at the time like the the upset of the fucking millennium beating the 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 premiership favorite favorite the roosters in round one so i expect the dolphins to be very up and about for that round one game i just yeah i just don't see drink water going massive to start the season tommy draboyevic he is in my team at the moment i just like <laughs> oh he's a he's a tick over 800k he averaged 81 like <sighs> We just, if if Trebojevic is fit, then this is definitely unders. Like, it's not last year. Last year, what it, we were able to get him for, like, under 600K, I think it was. Like, it was a no-brainer to pick Tommy up. And he started, yeah, he started well. I thought he started a bit slow, but, I mean, he's got 97. He had a buy, 100, 58, 106. Then he had, I mean, Pen... <laughs> against Penrith 26 uh you'll see a trend and then 57 37 he only played 71 minutes there um got a big one there against the Raiders big one against the Dolphins obviously and then missed yeah missed a bunch of bunch of footy I guess that was around origin as well that time so oh it's it's very very tempting the only I mean honestly he is in the team at the moment, but like they do have it. They got a tough draw. Like the the rabbits, the roosters, Parramatta. I know, I know Parramatta last year were poor defensively, but I feel like the team is too good to be as bad as they were last year. The roosters the same. I think the rabbits, uh, the rabbits will start strong. Obviously the dragons in there. He could fucking go two hundred, uh, and then Penrith, New Zealand Gold Coast. It's a shame like that Penrith game wasn't before the Dragons because if it was, you would maybe like hope that he goes a little bit under, lose a bit of cash and then go him in round five for Dragons, New Zealand, Gold Coast, Para, Canberra, Dolphins. But obviously, you know, that'd be a little bit too uh, <laughs> comfortable, I guess. But I don't know, Tommy is just such a fucking worry, man. And also the fact that He's playing the Vegas game, which I don't like. I really don't like that. I'm, I'm, I am, I am trying to steer clear of like attacking guys that are going to be playing in that Vegas uh, weekend. I just, I'm not. The field is five meters thinner. Like I, it just, it's, it's a big worry. It's a big worry. I think that uh, that Vegas weekend. I just, I'm, I'm. I'm keen on Trebojevic, but also for the price and the risk, I yeah, I could see myself not going him, really. Then we have Reese Walsh, which I was I was alluding to very similar to Scotty Drinkwater. I do think Walsh is just better. I I don't want to say better. I think they're, they're similar in a way, but both with different levels of skill in places i think i mean walsh is a decent kicker as well but drink water definitely has a better kicking game reese walsh eh, would they, they're, they're similar speeds i think i think walsh would get him over like 10 20 meters but drink water is fucking quick like they're, they're honestly really similar plays and play styles so in my opinion if you're really keen on drink water uh, I was going to say you would go Walsh, but then I'm like, well, he's playing in the Vegas weekend and the Broncos have a real rough draw. They've, uh, he didn't play the first game against, that's right. He didn't play the first game against Penrith and they, they won that game. He started at 550k and oh my God, look at the score. I sort of forgot how well he started, man. 105, 95, 84, 99, 86, 101. That's fucking crazy. Then a couple of low scores, and then sort of back into it. He was, well, he fin a couple of big ones to finish. He was a little up and down after his, like, incredible start. Obviously, had that suspension and a few ins and outs. Like, I do think Walsh is just going to keep getting better, but it's a tough, like, the Vegas game start, 
Rabbits, Penrith, Cowboys, Storm. Honestly, I this this could be a candidate for like after round five. Get him in for Dolphins, Raiders, Tigers, Roosters. Maybe I don't know. Obviously, it, that's a that's a long time away. You don't know what's happening at that point. But yeah, I you know I was gonna say I'd rather go Walsh over Drinkwater, but looking at that, I probably I'd probably rather go Drinkwater. I, I think they can both be pretty similar, and Drinkwater just has a better a better start to the season. So I I'd go Drinkwater. Also, he's a fucking super pot at four percent compared to compared to Walsh at eleven. Um, then we have Mr. Reliable Clint Gutherson. He, I mean, the Parramatta boys did me so well last year. Bryce Cartwright was in my team from round one till the end of the season. Just did sensationally. And uh, and then Clint Gutherson was uh, was incredible when I picked him up. I, I pretty much got on him at the perfect time. And I think I got off him at the perfect time as well. Like, he was so good. <laughs> he was so good. I feel like, I mean, he's he's just Mr. Reliable, right? But then when Dylan Brown was out, like, I mean, starting from here, I mean, again, 30, 37, fucking, there's the anomaly against Penrith. And there's 71, 74, 75, 86, 113, 67, 57, 25 against the Bunnies, 81, and then fucking bang, bang, bang. Missed a couple of games. Oh, that's right. He got fucking, didn't he get selected in Origin in the game? What game did he get selected? Game three? Fuck, that was crazy. And then, I mean, he's, he still scored a couple of tons on the back. Burnt, he scored 100 against Penrith. Probably, were they all rested then? I, I don't even know. Round 26? Probably not, right? Um, but, yeah, I, I, I love him. And I still think Gutherson, like, I just, I would never start Gutherson, but I do think... Uh, pff, fucking unless he gets a fucking origin call up again i do think he's just such a good player to pick up for that reliability over the origin and buy periods like if a lot of these fullbacks because if we look now drink water yeah no chance for origin but ponga re- well fuck it's honestly it's you probably shouldn't be worried too much about the origin because it a lot of them are like they they could be playing but you don't know ponga v walsh like i i wouldn't be shocked if they're both in the team somehow if they're both fit drink water no so that's nice tommy trebojevic if he's fit he'll be there in the centers gutherson well you wouldn't expect again uh like surely not right <laughs> so gutherson should be a good pick uh latrell mitchell will be there if he's fit Tedesco Edwards, Tedesco will still be there, I guess. So it's, uh, uh, y- you know, a lot of the top line guys are, are origin playing. So you're probably going to want to switch off. If you're going two guys that are going to get picks, you probably want to switch off over that period to, to get some, you know, momentum with some big scores. And Gutherson's just always like, he's just always that reliability over that time so i like it then the next guy i also like 10 percent of people so people are jumping on latrell mitchell coming in at 790k um i mean he played he played 16 games i actually thought he might have played less than that he i don't know i felt like he was out for for big chunks of the season like he sort of is um I mean, you can see, like, even, he started the season pretty solid. He scored 62 against Penrith, which is pretty decent. Only 34 against Manly. Fucking what happened there? (laughs) Then he went, he went massive. Um, He scored another 100 against Penrith. Dolphins, doggies, fucking killed him. Uh, Bronx, he got a ton almost. Like, then he missed a bunch here. He finished pretty strongly and then missed uh, the rest of the season. So, he... I mean, he started at 900k almost at the start of last year. He's, what is he? A tick under 800k? So, and what has he got? He's got Manly, Bronx, Roosters, Dogs, Warriors. I, again though, he's over in Vegas. I, I just, I'm really leaning off guys that are playing that first Vegas weekend. I just, I don't know. Things can go wrong, man. Like, I just, I just worry. I worry about like, off-field stuff and also just the the surface at, at the same time so i love latrell but 
I don't I, I do think the bunnies are going to start well, though. Like, they, they were so... They capitulated so terribly at the back end of last year. I feel like they're going to be fired up to start the season. So, I, I really don't mind the Latrell pickup. But if you're going to go Latrell... Out of these guys at the moment, I think Tommy, potentially, although I'm, I'm starting to wane... Or Latrell piqued my interest. Ruben Garrick, obviously, if you're going to get him, pick him up at center wing. Tedesco at 700k. I mean, <laughs> I mean he's still, he still averaged 70 points. I think he, he finished the season pretty well. Um, did I start with him last year? I honestly don't know. I feel like I might have. No, I definitely didn't. He was 836. I wouldn't have started with him. He was very disappointing. I think I owned him... No, I don't think I owned him at all last year. I don't think. Like, he was just really disappointing. I mean, he got 118 here. He got 218s on the, on the trot, basically. Uh, uh, you know, granted, he... Yeah, Tedesco last year was, like, definitely, like, against the bad teams, he would score well. But even, like, half-decent teams, he was pretty shoddy. Um... Because, again, his other big score, I mean, 89 against Manly, 134 against the Titans, 125 against Parramatta, who were very poor in defense, and then he finished well. So, I mean, I just... Who does he have? I mean, similar, like, the, the Vegas stuff. Yeah, I just I, I just wouldn't go to Desco. If he was coming at, like, a cheap, cheap price, yeah, maybe you'd take a punt. I mean, there's been a lot of talk. Like, he's been talking that he had a poor season and he's trying to get back to his best like it but Kenny I don't know I just I, watching him play he just doesn't look like he's going to get to those heights anymore he could but I just don't see it uh Dylan Edwards I, I don't know saying saying we need to change with Dylan Edwards he's obviously safe as houses but he's just never really been super coach relevant <clears throat> I mean he averaged similar to uh, Tedesco, for sure. I mean, I actually think last year was probably probably his best season to date, maybe? It's definitely up there, because what did he start at? Yeah. Well, seven, 700. He's, he's sort of just been around that same price, eh? He's just a guy that has the odd low score. Um, he's got, he, you know, he showed last year he does have a ceiling, but I just, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be going Dylan Edwards either. Um, three percent of people though, people are going him. Then we're starting to go down to some guys that I just I don't think it's worth it. Although there is one coming up here, Ryan Papenhausen. So uh, we'll we'll touch Chansey. Unfortunately, doesn't have the dual center wing this year. Even if he did at 700k, almost you probably would find it hard to stick him in there. But I mean, if he was center wing dual, I, I probably wouldn't mind picking him up. <laughs> but Ryan Pappenhausen, 23% of people are going him. I'm very tempted. <laughs> like, I mean, out of all these guys, and this is what I was talking about, out of all the guys that aren't like top, top price, this is the one guy that you can, you can save money whilst also getting a potential gun. Like, if he stays fit, he'll be in the top probably three fullbacks to finish the year unless something drastic happens. It's just the fact that, like... I mean, the good like, it's not good, but the fact that he came back from the knee injury, which was fucking a horrific knee injury, and obviously he got injured, like, straight away, right? But it wasn't... It wasn't, like, the same injury. It was a... Te like, again, it was a fucking nasty injury, but it was... It, you know, it was an ankle, right? It wasn't, uh, it wasn't like a knee. It wasn't a ligament. Obviously, a broken bone can be really bad, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a compound fracture. It wasn't anything too drastic, thankfully. Um, it wasn't compound, right? No. It looked nasty. I think it was like, fuck, what was it? It was like dislocated and break. That's why it looked way nastier. But I, it's surely... It, I, it wasn't compound, right? <laughs> I'm starting to second guess, but uh, I, I, that in my mind, I'm sort of like that bodes better than how it, you know, potentially could have been if it was another potential injury, just a freak, a freak accident type injury. So I'm, I'm confident he will come back. Like he, he came back looking pretty fit 
and firing after the the knee issue so the knee you know i guess the knees had more time to heal as well now uh proper preseason. like it'll be interesting to see in the trials how much game time he plays it would just be not like obviously the goal kicking is also a big aspect like is he going to goal kick probably i mean meany is obviously a good goal kicker but Papenhuyzen, it is Papenhuyzen's spot. It's just whether or not he's like, he feels confident kicking. Um, if we get, honestly, if we get confirmation he is goal kicking and he's fit and firing, which I do expect he'll be fit for for round one, I just it'll be hard not to go him. Like I said, you just get it's such a huge discount on other premium options, so you can you can save some money on a spot that usually you have to pay big for like you're saving like yeah 200k yeah basically 200k there's no one really like plus 900 so saving like 200k and you're getting a guy that can absolutely kill it obviously the (laughs) they're taking on penrith in round one which is like (laughs) it's not the best um it's not the greatest but then it's not a bad little run like warriors again i don't think is I still think they're going to be good, but I'm not, like, necessarily that scared about them defensively. Newcastle, Bronx, Dogs, Roosters, Rabbits, Gold Coast. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's up and down. It's up and down. It's not, it's not the easiest. It's not, the, it's not the hardest. I think the other, the other good thing about Pappy is that, like, he's, he's no, he's no chance of playing Origin. So, that's enough. If he stays fit, you're not going to have to trade him out. If he's killing it, everyone's going to have to trade him in over that period. So, that's another plus for Pappy. Um, yeah, I, it's just a, I guess the one, if you don't need the money, potentially, hmm, I'm just thinking, like, if you don't need, like, I don't mind the option still. I think Tom Draboyevic out of the rest of the guys is the most likely to just go fucking huge. Like, he just can. Obviously, I mean, Walsh, Drinkwater, they all can, but, I mean, Tommy in his peak, like, he, he probably scares me the most to start the season on fire. Um, so if you go Tommy as well as Ponga, if Tom doesn't really do too much, if he's looking a little bit fucking lame again, you can wait. Also see how Ryan Papenhausen starts. You don't have to obviously, then you don't have to play him against Penrith in round one, which, I mean, let's be real. Is he, is he likely to go big? I don't think so. Um, so you can wait, see how it's playing out. And if, if Papenhausen comes out in week two and three and goes, and goes good, Tommy's still not looking great. Then you can, you can downgrade, make a couple of hundred K going back to Papi, which, you know, the, the risk with that is that obviously in round three and four, like there's a lot of trades that you probably want to make. Like there's always, there's always a guy that's killing it that you're trying to get in before price rise or, guys that are shit the bed that you're trying to get out before they decrease so there's always a lot of trades to be made but i don't mind that option you know it's sort of playing it safe rather than if you go because the problem if you go Papenhausen, right like he's not he's he's very much likely not to score well against penrith and if he didn't go tommy if tommy fucking kills in around one Pappy didn't go well in round one then all of a sudden round two Puppy also doesn't go great. Tom Trebojevic goes huge again. Like, if you wanted to then try to get rid of Papenhausen, it's very difficult. Like, unless you saved a couple of hundred K, you're not going to really be able to get up to one of the other gun fullbacks before he potentially loses cash and the other guys make cash. So, I think probably going expensive i mean just in general having like a more expensive guy over a cheaper guy is is good practice anyway just because if something happens you can downgrade to the other guy without having to make money but i don't mind that i don't mind that because yeah we can sort of see how puppy's looking in round one you're not expecting a big score but you can at least see how he's moving if he's goal kicking so i yeah i actually i'm probably leaning towards that like just not starting him 
because there's not again I, d I just don't see the risk in in not starting him he's I, I will be <laughs> he will not go 100 plus in round one against Penrith I just don't see it happening I just don't see it happening probably not 80 plus either so yeah I don't mind that then we're starting to get down to guys that you're just not gonna go I mean Hammer people are starting to look at Hammer in the center wing and I gotta be honest I'm, I'm I am half keen obviously you're not gonna pick him up at fullback but center wing for sure like just having a starting fullback playing center wing is just so handy because they got the base I mean Fido was so good last year and like he He's so damn talented. Like, it, there's definitely more Hamaso can do. Like, there is definitely more for him to improve. And that's a scary thought, uh, how much better he potentially could get. Especially with some of the more attacking players they've got. A better forward pack. Like, it's it's not a bad option to go hammer at center wing. Um, AJ Brimson. He'll pro so, Brimson... I mean, I, I, I'm not that keen on anyway, but he'll probably get the center wing dual status because he's 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 pretty much been confirmed that he's going to play center wing this year. So Supercoach will update his dual with fullback center wing. I Yeah, I don't know. At 600k, I'm still not that keen on Brimson even at center wing. I just, yeah, I don't know. I think there's better options. Dream Buller, love him. He was great last year, but... I mean, the buy in round one and also just, I, I just, again, I think there's better options. As you go down the list here, yeah, there's no one, there's no one really else to talk about in terms of fullback. So, this is what I was talking about. Like, I, you could go someone cheap. <laughs> so, but like even, I, I mean, I look here, who are you going to go? So, like some guys that stand out, right? I guess... Brimson, right? But he'll be sent to wing, so you wouldn't pick him up at fullback. Keep going down. Jaden Campbell is 5'8 dual, so you wouldn't pick him up in fullback. You'd put him at 5'8 if you were going to get him. Um, I mean, Blake Taff, if he gets the fullback spot, like, I just... I, what's he going to score at the dogs, really? Uh, Tommy Chester, good young player, but, I mean, he's definitely not getting the fullback spot over Drinkwater. Xavier Savage, but again, he's dual center wing, so, you know, you just put him in center wing. You wouldn't play him at fullback. Um, Suofano Longo, similar, but again, I don't, I don't see him getting a spot regardless. Uh... Ken O'Kinney, I mean, he's a good young player. There is a there is a bit of talk that Jaden Campbell's, um, he's he's recovering from an injury, and obviously Kinney has been great in the preseason. So again, it would be too risky. Like he is like an actual cheapy just fullback. That okay, maybe like if you, but again, I just don't see the value in it because like fullback's your best spot fullback's the spot where you need to put the captaincy and get the biggest points typically so i just i yeah uh, i just don't really like going that cheap option ko weeks another popular but you know everyone's got him at five eight and then yeah chevy stewart the same center wing fire uh, fullback and that's pretty much it so fullbacks it's a tough choice for me personally Kalen ponga is a lock and then <sighs> Yeah, the more I look at it, I think I'm going to go with... I mean, honestly, fucking drink water is fucking very tempting, but I don't know, Tommy, Luttrell... Oh, like, at the moment, I'm, I'm looking drink water, Tom, Luttrell. Yeah, probably those three guys are, are, are the top runners. Papanaus, and obviously, I'm very keen on, but I just think I'm going to start with someone a little bit more expensive... And if Pappy looks pretty good, then sure, I'll downgrade. Well, I mean, I might not even downgrade. Dep depending on my other foot. Like, if I go Ponga and Tom Trevojevic and they both kill it, and Drinkwater also, uh, not Drinkwater, Papanelson also kills it, I'm not just going to trade. I'm not just going to trade Tom Trevojevic for no reason. Um, it'll just be, okay, well, you know. That's, that's just how it goes, so, yeah, 
<laughs> so much else. Like I, I was trying to think like, yeah, if, if, if that happens, then sure, I just, I, I, yeah, I could have saved a couple of hundred K and gone with Pappy. But again, like that's the thing. Even if he does well, he's not going to go that much increased value because he's not going to score a crazy amount against Penrith. Tom Trebojevic could go crazy. Drink what he could. Latrell Mitchell could. So there's definitely some options, and I'm I'm unsure. Ponga is a lock, and then it's just oh, it's just a bit of a lucky dip. <laughs> it's just a bit of a lucky dip, and that's the thing. You know, you can look at all the stats and and whatnot, but you know, go with your gut. Go with your gut. If you're thinking fucking Gutherson is going to kill it in round one, I mean, they got the dogs. They got the dogs in round one. Gutherson. Reese Walsh, I mean, the Roosters were not good last year. They're coming off a grand final loss. Reese Walsh, you go fucking bananas. Um, Tedesco, Tedesco, uh, nah, probably not. But yeah, you know, go with your gut. Go with your gut on the fullbacks. There's plenty of good options. You're not a fucking, you're not going to be able to tell the future. So you just got to, and, and if, uh, and if the one you go stinks, then there's plenty of options to, trade sideways or downgrade it to someone else like they're they're all around the same price like that's the thing there's no one there's no one that's like absolutely unattainable if someone else doesn't go as well so you can you can pivot pretty easily from the fullbacks and that's just what you gotta do if you get a couple of weeks of not great scores and someone else is killing it it's only a couple of weeks it's only a couple of weeks and then and then trade him out for the guy that's uh that's actually doing the business but uh the fullbacks that's that's what we're looking at um but yeah that's pretty much all the positioning is done and dusted after i do this video i'm gonna remake the team with everything that i've had a look at and and we'll see we'll see what i'm leaning towards we'll see what i'm what i'm looking at after we remake a uh, a team but hopefully you guys are enjoying the supercoach action make sure to like and comment and i'll see you in the next one